All right, this is Mofo Sida, and continuing with our playlist, where I'm taking a look at the pamphlets I got, the Town City Nations pamphlet, the Gunpla Catalog of 2013, and the Mini Hobby Japan um, Carnival 2013 Special Edition booklet. So, first let's go look at the Town City Nations one. So, let's put this off, these two off to the side, and we'll look at this. And... If you hear any of the background, it's me watching SNL on VH1. So. Alright, so here's the Tom Shee Nation's pamphlet, the portfolio of 2013. Tom Shee Nation is a fusion of our top brands. Tom Shee means soul. It's built from creative DNA and powered by passion, cool factor, fun, amazement. Sorry for the orange dot, that's my recording light. When you hear Tamashi Nations, you know we pour our heart and soul into it. We guarantee you'll find something different, something new, something surprising, and constantly evolving. So yeah. So here's the, the logo of Tamashi Nations on the Eurasia continent with um, Africa and Australia down here. The island of Japan and the other islands from here. With the back shows the Americas with um I think this is Greenland up here. Not sure. Don't remember my geography. And but it has all the various um labels they have done. The SH Montserrat, which has some good figures like the King Kong and Gojira figures. The D Arts, which is about the Digimon, the SH Figurage, which is the um, comprises of most of the figures you will see, and figure out zero, which are the statues or statuettes, whatever you want to call them, of certain figures that are exclusives. The second one, second row, has Chibi Arts, Ultra Act, the Ultraman, the SIC, which is the Super Imagine from Chokogen. Um, I did one of the Kamen Rider W Cycle and Joker SIC. Um, for those lines are usually the reimagining of the Kamen Riders mostly. And the earlier lines are the more monster esque version of And this is the SIC Tamashi Nation, the Kiwani Tamashi figures, which are the smaller scale figures. And third line is, don't know, and this EX, the, ah, uh, this is the Saint Seiya figures, it's sort of like the, um, the Sochaku Henshin figures line, where you basically put the cloth or armor pieces on the figures, don't know that, this is the, Robot Spirits line, the Metal Beard line, the Perfect Model line, the Armor Girls project, which is, I think that's a new one. This is the Half Age characters, Chaku Henshin, like I mentioned before, Soul Chogokin, the DX, or Deluxe Soul Chogokin, and I don't know this one. But see, here's a look at here it says in 1950 it established Bankai Company Limited in Japan and in 2008 the establishment of Tomshi Nation's brand via the Bandai Toy Collectors Department. And here see it was distributed by Bluefin and Bandai logo. And so let's go in and take a look. So in the first panel You'll see the let's see. Yep. Okay. You will see the Monster Arts figure of Kong. Right here, the battle scars in his face. The eighth wonder of the world. And it shows the various poses you can get him into. And it says it released in May 2013, sixty five dollars, sixteen centimeters tall. Let me get this. 
more out so you can see the entire image because right now this is very far away from my arm and here are here is the introduction introducing sh monster arts a revolutionary new monster action figure series incorporating state-of-the-art hs figure arts technology this monster action figure adopts three different materials these are the plastics the abs p pc and pom plastics for the main body for the mechanical monsters like the kiru or the mogra the, it uses the ZNDC, the die cast and zinc alloy material to provide a metallic texture and weight which is true because these two are heavier than say the regular Godzilla or the space Godzilla toys. Also the articulation points are made of appropriate materials to emphasize the functional the function or the functionality. So here you have the Godzilla from the Movie Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, which released in November 2000, $68.15.5 centimeters tall. And here with the um, from the movie Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2, Mecha Godzilla from December 2011, which retailed at $80, 16 centimeters tall. Here is the Godzilla from the partly titled. I guess you can say partly tall because it's a versus title, I don't know. Um, that released in April 2012. I really wanted to see his birthday, but it was very pricey as an $84 price point for 16.5 centimeters tall. And right here is the Mogara from the Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla Mo movie, released in June 2012 at the $85 price point at 16.5 centimeters. And in the second row, here we have Fio Rodan from the Godzilla vs. Godzilla 2 uh, movie from August 2012 with the nice price point at $43, but 13 centimeters tall to an extent of 21 centimeters, which I'm sure is referring to the wingspan. And here is the little Godzilla and the crystal that comes with it from... July 2012 at a $43 price point at 9.5 centimeters. And over here is the Okay. So it's not gonna really focus on the lettering. So this is King Godira, Godira from the first movie appeared in from a Released on October 2012 at the expensive point of $125, but has the greatest height at 25 centimeters tall. And here is the Burning Godzilla from the 1995 movie vs. Destroya. Uh, releases December 2012 at the $87 price point, 15.5 centimeters. And the very last line is the Godzilla Jr which appeared at the end of the movie, released on January 2013, $51 price point, 11 centimeters. And these two are Destroyer and the Destroyer Evolution set, retailed at March 2013 at $150 and July 2013 at the $90 price point in, respectively, which at the Giant Destroyer at 25 centimeters. Uh, comparing to King Godira and the evolution set at 10 centimeters for each one because they're on this scale they're more like the, um, the mini scale like a roughly but the little God God Godzilla ring so to the second page this is the um, the SH figure arts for the um, North American release for the Mighty Morphing Power Rangers 20th Anniversary and here is the Jason Red Ranger and Tommy the Green Ranger with the uh, original Megazord. Now for the SH figures read up it says a new standard in action figures representing the state of the art of Bandai's design technology. 
Designed to perfectly mimic the range of motion of the human body, the series name is a contraction of the concepts of simple style and heroic action. Standing roughly 14 centimeters tall, the highly posable SH figure figures are designed to feel like little treasures. And here, here is a little label of the Money Morphin Power Rangers, Super Rope Chocolate and Megazord, which were released in October 2012 at the $61 price point and again 14 inches. So, these two figures were released around the same time as their Japanese counterpart with the Daijujin um, Super Robot Chochokin toy uh, was released I guess one or two years earlier than that. So the Japanese counterpart for these two are the Tyrino Ranger Geki and the um, the Dragon Ranger Burai with both of the Japanese releasing coming with the powerful rangers accessory pieces for the neck and the belt buckle for the Akiba Ranger appearance and here on the other side is the Dragon Ball Z SA Trigrats with Super Saiyan Goku um, Vegeta with his first appearance with the Scouter uh, Final Form Frieza and Perfect Cell. And down here you'll see the other figures with the Piccolo, Super Saiyan Vegeta, Super Saiyan 3, Goku, Trunks, um, Future Trunks by the way, and Little Gohan, the special color edition from his fight versus Cell. And so these are nice. These are very nice. And these range from the $40 pride baseline is the Super Saiyan 3 at 39 to the expensive 57 price for a perfect sell which is weird because even though this is a special color it retails at $40 exactly but it was the San Diego Com Comic Con exclusive for 2012 for the next side so this is the D Arts line here's the Oh yeah, that wasn't for what did it stand for then? Oh digital. Okay. Oh I was close. Employing the state of the art action figure technology used with the Etches Figure Arts series, the D Arts Figures series brings modern digital characters to life as tactile action figure media. I don't know why they added the media part in it's, it's action it's figures so. though. Ranging a roughly 14 centimeters, 5.5 inches in height, these figures faithfully portray their digital counterparts, feeling stylish proportion, as well as a colorful array of effect parts and incorporates superior articulation to allow for the recreation of, of exciting action scenes. Cutscenes, um, action poses, combos, anything. So, at the top portion, it's the original Mega Man line, well, me, me, original Mega Man series. So this has Mega Man with Rush and Mad Mel Met, Met, short for helmet. And here is Bass with his um, companion Treble. And down here you have Mega Man X, um, Zero Type 2, Vile, the Night Blazer from Wide Arm Second Ignition. And here is Terry Bogart from King of Fighters. This is Izangani no Okami from Persona 4, the anime series. And here is Alisa Umela from God Eater. And down here is the only Digimon representation on here. The Gallant Mon for Digimon. And over here is the One Piece line, which um, is pretty accurate because most of these figures are from the Figure Out Zero line. The other representations of these, of Figure Out Zeros, would be the monsters from Kamen Rider, which mostly come out as exclusives for Figure Out Zero. So here we have. Um, Nami battle version with her staff with a effect part. And here 
right here is Sanji. Most of these are in their battle version. So Sanji, Zoro. Um, I always forget. It's like, what is his name over here? Dracul, Mihawk. You have Ace. You have. Isn't that Usopp? It's right here. It says Soge King. And here is Hancock. The heart shape effect part. And down here you have the other characters. Down here. And well, let's read the read up. The figure out zero figurines feature stylish proportions and high precision sculpts at an affordable price. Focusing on realism and collectability, figure out zero figurines bring out the best of the best of the characters they portray. Which is kind of accurate because they usually range in the thirty or forty dollar range. So these are basically the um, sculpts of the essay figure outs without all the joints. So yeah, the other one. The One Piece film, Zed, for the movie, these are the exclusive, so, man. and yeah, this is going to be a long one, sorry about this, and this is the Chokokin, which figures the SH figure arts, the other is so Chokokin, the DX and the Metal Beer, Metal Build, with Manager Z, or Manager Z, by your English version. This is the Double O Gundam. And here is the the very very weird um, Disney combination robot thing. And here from Star Wars Episode Four is C three PO. And down here you can see their individual modes and the, yeah. And here is the Saint Seiya cloth. So basically, these are the same as the um, so ch so Chaku Henshin, but it's more accurate to their anime portrayal because their faces are not entirely covered by the suit. So here you have uh, articulation everywhere and gold. These are the gold cloth. And down here you have the other stuff with the Tamashi robots with the Banshee um, the Gun Lagan with the Yusa Sekshi, the Mecha and here you have Kamen Rider X and the Zero was it Zero? it was, I can't even pronounce the name anymore, I haven't watched Liouch and here you have the Chibi Arts Hancock and yeah this is a recent line the Gundam Girls line, this is based off the Zero, not the Zero, yeah, the Wing Gundam Zero version from the movie, and that's it for that, so, here's the next one, la -di -da, da da where did I put it, yeah. so this is the Hobby Japan with the um, full armor unicorn Gundam in there with the other Gundams, let's take a look. The back is the World Cup, which as of this video has already passed, and the other events, uh, assuming the mid-year campaign. Okay, on the inside, it tells you what the Gundam Carnival is. Here is Banshee versus Full Armor Gundam with the toys, which is really good. So the Gundam Carnival, the annual special Gundam sample image gallery featured in Hobby Japan. For this time, we are happy to announce Gunpla Carnival Special Edition 2013 as a special mini book by Bandai Hobby Department X Hobby Japan. Uh, you can read this cross, like in um, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, because that's also how they read it in Japanese as cross. Um, with this pr early spring power, we will deliver super passionate Gundam sample images along with the latest information finally revealed in the mini book. The slogan is Fun to Build Gunpla. Just really good. So let's look at the uh, second page, and here is the full armor unicorn Gundam in unicorn mode. So I won't go over the um, the summaries because they are hella long. So you can try to read it yourself, and if you can't read it, I can always post like just the summary on my Facebook, and you can contact me. 
you know, like PM it or something. So, yeah, these are pretty good. It releases on May 2nd of um, 2013. So it's part of the 144 scale, the um, HG, the high grade. And look at all that detail, it's painted model. That's really good. And over on the other side is the Banshee Norn, which is the second version of the Banshee model in its unicorn mode. And this is another um, HG if and it's already on sale. That's really good. So it has added other added um, accessories. And you can look here. I don't know if this will zoom in or not. Not zoom in if it will freaking focus because it never focuses. Oh, wow, that's really crappy. Alright, but whatever. So, this is the what you build in the box compared to the painted model that's shown here. So. Yeah, as you can see, it, as with most of the Banshee, it's either a orange or a yellow instead of a golden color. So, and here is the Gunpa Love with the Elio Strike Gundam, the Forbidden Gundam, which uh, pretty good coloring here. And here is the other Sea Destiny, the Force Impulse, Sword Impulse, Legend, the Uwashi Asukuki Gundam, which is like really good with like the chrome gold bits and everything the strike freedom gundam the infinite justin gundam all in high grade so here is the unlimited possibility by connecting high grade kits and real grade kits together which i will assume is really nice and here this is uh, you can do it yourself. The simple method of building Gunpla. So this shows you um, how to make a Gundam. In this case, the Destiny Gundam, the special edition, as shown here. You have you need a nipper, a design knife, or a hobby knife, whatever you can get, and Gundam markers for the detail. And it shows you how to clip out each part. The beam shield effects with the watercolors. The realistic detail and the small dip decals or decals depending on what part of your order it comes from the inking to make the paneling even greater and you'll see how ridiculously awesome that looks in the picture and here the, spe the special guide project if you're not sure get this Gunpla and the read up for this one says every month there is a new release and Gunpla is proud of having huge collections as uh, character plastic kit from the latest items to previous collections there are many great kits existing editors of hobby japan suggest these gum plot with confidence of our with our own opinion and prejudice if you're unsure pick these you will not regret it so yeah so here is the perfect grade uh, a stray red frame the Legend BB series, Musha Godmaru, the Zaku 2, version 2.0, the Master Grade, and the Master Grade Freedom Gundam, with the oh, bottom portion with the Tall Case EW MG model, and the Master Grade Sinanju, Sinanju Stein, version Ka, which is the, um, with, um, cut. Toki Hajime version and on the other page has another Zaku 2 but it's the F2 version and it's the high grade of the Universal Century and here's another HGUC with a Zuf Custom and uh, Hambrabi with the new Gundam um, heavy weapon system with the Zuda and the Jesta Cannon 